The title of this broadcast is Guns vs. God, Have We Lost Sight? And I did it on purpose, Guns vs. God, instead of God vs. Guns. Because God vs. Guns implies God fighting with guns. Josh, <laughs> I'm going to give Josh a little Facebook love. Hang on a second. Josh Haynes. So, I mean, I get it. I get it. There's lots going on in the world. If you watch my, if you follow me when I do these live feeds, I have a lot to say always. That's who I am. And I get it. People are afraid. No matter how big of muscles you got, no matter how big your gun is, no matter how big your truck or your house is, if you're carrying guns from a particular disposition, there's so much going on in the world, I need a gun. I hear you and I feel you. Versus, I have a gun in my house and I'm going to get me a gun. For whatever reasons to protect myself. Those are two different things, completely. One is having a gun out of fear. And the other is having a gun because I have a gun and it's part of my home. And it's part of my stance. And who I am is an individual that says, please, I'm asking, begging you, please, don't tread on me. That's one energy. And the other is, I'm so scared to death of what's going on in the world, I'm going to get a gun. And I hear you as well. But have we truly lost sight? You don't have to like me and you don't have to like what I'm going to propose. We as Christians, we as spiritualists, we as whatever denomination or creed, code, or sect that we follow, we believe in God. But do we? As we go get that gun, are we believing in God as protector and creator and that which sustains all life? Or... Are we believing in the gun I just bought? I'm not judging you. Trust me, I love you. I am not judging you. And whatever makes you feel safe, secure, and comfortable, and warm, and fuzzy, I want that for you. The simple question I pose is in the buying and the purchasing of the gun, who is my protector in that moment? Does me buying the gun imply, but I believe in God, but I'm not so sure as to why I need the gun? Simple question. Do I really believe in God at all? Because if I did, maybe I might not need the gun. Or if I knew my creator in an intimate relationship, my divine parent, I'm a divine child and I'm in contact in a relationship, sensual, intimate relationship with my divine parent to where I feel that connection. I don't feel the disconnect. Then the owning of a gun becomes a no brainer. It becomes a not a non choice. I don't get it. It's not out of judgment. I don't get it. I had a friend of mine years ago came up to me and said, Keith, my relationship is going bad, sour. I said, ah, sorry to hear that. No, Keith, you don't understand. Okay, and enlighten me. He's not all there. And so now I'm sleeping on the sofa because we're starting to break up, but I don't trust him. These are her words. Hang on to every word I say as far as what she said to me. Literally. I, me, me, this place in me, does not trust in him. Trust him, trust her, trust this, trust that. It's a non-trust of a something. So she said, because now I'm sleeping on the sofa because I don't trust him. I have a very large knife under the sofa. To protect myself. And I said, Lisa, she asked me for my thoughts. And I said, Lisa, 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 what are you doing? She said, Keith, I'm trying to protect myself. 
I said, okay. Play this out with me since you asked. He said, sure. I said, all right. What happens if you go to work tomorrow and that knife is under the sofa that you have been sleeping on and he decides he's not going to go, go to work tomorrow because he has a vacation day or he's not feeling all too well and later that day he's feeling a little bit better or because he's on vacation, he's going to decide that he's going to vacuum the, the living room rug. And in so vacuuming the living room rug, he raises up the sofa to vacuum under it and he finds a knife. And he's, because as you deemed, he's not all there, finds this knife and says, how dare she? So when she gets back from work, Lisa that is, and he corners her with this knife and says, how dare you think I would ever do this to you? And a confrontation ensues. Not a pretty picture. Many years ago, a friend of mine, she had someone break into our apartment. She was my roommate. And because of what happened, I'm not going to trivialize her situation that made her afraid because she was attacked. I love her and I want her to be safe always. But I noticed because she was my roommate, everywhere we went, when we got into a not so good neighborhood, she would slam down the lock on the door. And we would come to a stop sign. That's why she would slam the lock down the door. Because we came to a stop sign. And a certain color of people, or lack of color of people, would be at the stop sign hanging out in the corner. She would slam it down and I said, why did you do that? She goes, because I'm afraid that they might they, whoever the they are, might come in and I said, do you not understand what you just did? Out of your fear of choosing the gun, out of your fear of choosing the knife, out of your fear of locking that door so immediately, what happened if the people you are afraid of saw you do that and thought to themselves, how dare you to insinuate that I would be that kind of person and then you inflame them and the situation. And therefore it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that you brought about said experience in your life. Have we lost sight? People say, well, guns are not the problem. It's the people who wield them. Very good point, and I agree. Totally agree. Totally agree. When you have such connection with divine parent, it becomes beyond guns. Whatever you intend happens, like it or not, conscious or not, believe me or not. If you're finding something to protect you other than your connection to source, you are literally, literally saying unconditional parent who loves you unconditionally that you're supplicating to the universe. Bring something into my experience so I can prove to myself, ah, you see, I told you I needed a gun. Self-fulfilling prophecy. People who have guns in their house and carry guns and have someone break in their house and they use the gun or at least pointed it to protect themselves and nothing really happened other than the fact that they pointed it. They will immediately come to the point and the, 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 the argument that I told you I needed this. Really? People with guns die all the time. Look to war. Nothing comes out. Nothing good comes out of wielding guns. People die from wielding guns. People who carry guns die as well. I'm not here to change you. You're not broken. I want the best for you. And if carrying a firearm, locking the door, carrying a knife gives you that sense of protection, by all means. 
And as someone said in the room a minute ago, Mickey Morrell said, Keith, God gives us the means to protect ourselves. Absolutely, totally agree. Will God feed you if you don't work? Well, I'm not, I'm not here to debate with you, Mickey, but Jesus did say, did say, did say in the Bible, look at the birds. Are they not clothed and fed and are you not greater than they? I'm just reciting words for the master. I can tell you, Mickey, that I don't work at all and I get fed. I have a house. I earn my living just fine. Though you may use the word work in quotes, I don't work. I don't do anything I don't want to do. I play for a living. I play, meaning I'm playing now. I'm playing in the arena of happiness. I play music for a living. The key word here is play. So as in the words of the master, he said, look to the birds. Are they not clothed and fed? And then Mickey continues, will God house you if you don't? do your part totally hear you my brother doing your part doesn't require having a job so to speak mickey i'm asking you because i don't i don't know i know what it's like to be me maybe in utopia i live in utopia mickey every day i live in utopia i just got home from a gig doing my play and i get to hang out and dialogue with you and other beautiful people and mickey says definitely in heaven but buddy, you live in Memphis. No, sir, you live in Memphis. I don't live in Memphis. My body is in Memphis. I don't live in Memphis. I live right here. This is not a bragging point for Keith or to, to step one up on you, Mickey. But to answer your question, you said I definitively live in Memphis. No, sir, I don't. I do not live in Memphis. I live in the comfort of my connection to my divine parent. And Mickey, I hope that, uh, I don't doubt that you are, find that space within yourself. My brother, I do. Hello, Mr. Rob Garrett. Good to see you, brother. You sounded phenomenal tonight, bro. Mickey, I, I understand you, bro. I do. I understand the idea of, of the world that we live in and how chaotic it is and can be. But are we really seeing what we think we're seeing? Hello, Lisa. Hello, Jaden. And I, can t I can't speak for everyone else. I can only speak for me. But the world that I live in is not Memphis, Tennessee. It's not. It's not for me. I love Memphis. In fact, I don't see the slant. I don't see the slight. I don't live in that place at all. I don't. And it's not a one-up on anyone. It's truly declaring who I am as a sentient, conscious, spiritual, aware being, human being. I don't live in that world of guns and fighting. I don't. And it does not show up in my life. And people say, well, Keith, I had somebody tell me back in the 9-11 days. In fact, the very day that, it, the very night it happened, the very day it happened, I played music that night at Mulligan's in Cordova on Trinity. And one of my musician friends says, well, Keith, let me get your take on it since you are practicing spiritualist. What would you do? Will you not get guns and go arm yourself? And should we not go to war? And I, and I simply just said, this is not about the survival of my body. This is about the evolution of my soul. I do understand self-defense. Spiritual teachers will tell you, immediate proximity of self-defense, totally cool. Taking it beyond that and trying to protect yourself from a self-defense situation that has not happened only brings about the self-defense situation and lucky for you if you have something to protect yourself that became self-fulfilling prophecy. Hello, Mr. Travis. Good to see you, buddy. You know, again, this may sound like Keith is trying to... It's not. It is not. And if you think that you don't know me well enough... Come hang out with me. I will buy you lunch because I would love to empower you and impart to you something I've learned, not in the form of only information. Dear Lord, it's not about information. We can all read about information. And I can tell people things 
which is information. But when we hang out together and I can look at you and touch you and you can feel my space and I can feel your space. The gun locking your door and the knife under your couch is an illusion. It may protect you for the moment, but you are sticking out intention to the unconditional wishing tree. We call it God, unconditional love. I love you so much, my child. I know you can never hurt yourself and you can never die because your life in this meat suit, in this body is an illusion. And no matter what we think, no matter what we do, conscious or not, unconditional loving parents says, Here's a whole bunch of what you're asking for because the universal language is not English. It's intention and vibration, conscious or not. And we get it. Chad says guns are tools. Absolutely they are. But if you think about it, there's no way out of this conundrum. If you think about it, hello, Brian Blanchard, my dear brother. If you think about it, even though a gun is a tool and guns don't kill people, people use the guns as a tool to kill people. Even as a tool, what do guns do? You put the gun on a table and you're right, a gun is a tool and people use the guns to kill people. I totally get it. Let's elevate ourselves above the logic to another place. Gun on table, nobody dies if nobody touches. Gun on table, nothing good comes from gun on table. You leave gun on table, unstable child or child who is curious picks up said gun with no intention to kill and people die. America owns the most guns in a public way. You don't need a license or a permit to carry a gun. They're everywhere. Shotguns exist everywhere. My father has shotguns because we're from South Louisiana and you don't need permits. Rabbits, deer, ducks, people die from guns. Creatures die from guns. Keith, guns are a tool. Pick up a stone and throw it. Use a slingshot. Use a Nerf gun. People die from guns. Well, Keith, no matter what you say, I'm going to carry a gun. And that's okay. I am not here to change your philosophy and your belief system whatsoever. The title of this broadcast, Guns versus God. Have we lost sight? I am not claiming to know everything it's a very in fact if you look at the title the the end of the title there is a question mark i'm just asking the simple question have we lost sight and i don't mean sight that's seeing have we lost sight that's vision have we lost sight that's creator creator lives here we all know creator lives here so instead of bang 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 and this is going to be my protector. And I have it in my holster. But when we live in the gate. You are invincible. To whatever degree. You are connected to your divine parent. Jason says. Our minds are tools. Please let's use them. Jason. I don't think you spoke that from using your mind. I think you spoke that from your heart, meaning, yes, our minds are tools. Let's use them. That was a heart fervor, bro. Hello, Agi. No. I get it. We're living in a world. Things are going awry. Things are going amok. I get it. And people are afraid. Terrorists, racist, martial law. That's noise. It's noise. It's a belief that terrorists, racist, and martial law is dominant. That's mental mind construct control. And it's plugged into a system of control. And when we plug into the system of control, because it's the mind and the mind is fear, 
Of course we feel that we need a gun, a knife, or lock the door because I'm scared to death. And though the mind looks like it's higher than the heart, because it's up here and the heart is here, that's an illusion. The heart is actually higher. And when you dwell in this place and you connect to something that is more powerful than beyond guns, beyond the knife, beyond locking the door, and living in love, God is love, God is light. The mind is noise and dark because it's afraid of what's going on in the world that's dark. So when you live in God, when you live in love, when you live in light, it just goes away. You no longer feel a disconnect. You no longer feel afraid. You are dwelling in the kingdom. And you know that if we are Christians or Buddhists, the Buddhists are humble. They never hurt. In fact, they're vegans. They don't they don't kill any other being ever, ever, ever. As Christ, he sacrificed his life. He even told Peter, put that sword away. You live by the sword, you will die by the sword. This is the words of the master. Josh, my brother, says, we have a shotgun here at the house, but only for home defense. I hope only... Use it for a gun range, but somehow breaks and jilling and see Josh, I get it. That is such an, an awesome I totally get that, Josh. It's of a different mentality. I have this in my house. And that's what it is. It's a gun, it's a tool, and if I ever need a screwdriver or my shotgun or a hammer and a nail, it's a tool. And you use it as such. And so, Josh, I am so not referring to that, but that I'm glad you said that because it gave me a counterpoint, the contrast to make the point of why I'm doing this broadcast. Josh, thank you. Josh, you are the role model of what I, I not, a, not that I am in the right position to say, but for the sake of this broadcast, of what I'm talking about, owning a gun from that perspective is different from owning a gun because it... I get it. My heart hurts. My solar plexus was kicked. My groin was kicked. When we read about what happened in Florida, it's horrible. It's horrible. This, that, it all hurts all of us. But using Josh for the sake of this idea, I have this. It's in the closet, nice and neat. I need it. That's where it's at. From, oh my God, what's going on in Florida? I'm going to go get me this brand new Glock and I'm going to load it. It changes the entire tone. And you will, you can and or, maybe not in this life, put yourself in a situation where said karma, reap what you sow, comes around, goes around. For every action is an equal opposite reaction. It will come back and bite you on your unconscious ass. That is cosmic law. It's cosmic law. Having said tool for when you need said tool is one thing. It's like a screwdriver. I have a screwdriver. But if you pull out that screwdriver everywhere you go thinking you need it to protect yourself, creates a new dynamic. The title of this broadcast, again, for those who are just arriving, Guns versus God, Have We Lost Sight? Have We Lost Sight? I will never own a gun. When I was a child growing up in South Louisiana, I was just a boy. Ignorant. It doesn't make me right or it doesn't nullify whatever actions have and or will come back to me in my life. That I hunted. I could never bring myself to hunt and kill something ever again. Could not do it. Cannot do it. Can't do it. So keep what will you do in a situation of defending yourself? I do not foresee, not a, out of blind stupidity, being in a situation where that would arise for me. And because of my good grace and my connection to my divine parent, if that arises for me, I know unequivocally, without a doubt, 
This is my path. No one wants to die. But maybe everyone should think about their mortality in such a way that it takes you beyond the box, beyond the border of your mortality. Because you will never and can never die. You have always existed. You are aware now and you will forever exist. That creates comfort in a person. And ensures that, oh my God, my life will go on forever. And not only getting that in the form of an understanding. As I said, when you no longer choose to have a gun because you're connected in the gate. The kingdom. That's my favorite new word. Dear Lord, it's my favorite new word. The kingdom. You don't feel a disconnect from your parent. Therefore, you don't have a, a moment of being afraid as to why you need a gun to protect yourself from terrorists and bad people. Because when you live in that kind of place, there are no bad people. There's just bad, there's just people. And because the reason you see that there's just people, because you're not disconnected from the light, from the source that is holding everything together. And there's no longer need for a gun. I am not here to judge you. And whatever makes you feel comfortable, warm, and fuzzy, dear Lord, I want that for you. I want it for you. Just be prepared by being conscious of what it is you're doing. And we know what it is you're doing. You know what it is you're doing. I know what it is I'm doing. Let me rephrase that. More from the space of why are we doing it? Hello, Lori. Why are we doing it is the more important question. I'm doing this because this is my home. You may say, well, Keith, yeah, I'm doing this because of my home. But notice the inflection in my voice, how it changed. I'm doing this because it's part of my home. Versus, I'm doing this because it's part of my home. Keith, it sounds like to me you said the same thing I did. The energy dynamic changed. Hello, Carl, my broham. Ali says, this is exactly what I needed tonight. You're welcome, dear. It's not about carrying the gun. It's not about carrying the knife. It's not about locking the door. It's not about using the screwdriver as a weapon. It's about using the gun as you use the sofa and the table in your house. It's part of my home. I feel in my power. I feel strong. It's part of a, it's a manifestation of who I am and don't tread on me. It's an affirmation and a declaration to say, I am steadfast in my spirit. That is no different than someone who is a black belt. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Greg. My gun... I'm used to protect myself because I'm scared to death. Or, my gun is my black belt. My metaphorical black belt. Or you have someone who's a black belt in karate who is a bully. And he's carrying that said gun from a bully standpoint. You screw with me, I'm going to bust a cap in your ass. Or someone who's a black belt who is always humble because we know that's one of the number one rules in martial arts. Use your martial arts to create peace and not inflict pain. And black belt, if he's following the code, he's got a gun because he's a black belt. He's a metaphorical, he's, he has a metaphorical gun because of the black belt. Because he can pull out that said black belt gun at any time and kick your fucking ass. But he doesn't do it. Because he doesn't shoot from the head. He doesn't fight from the head. It's about the heart. He doesn't just fire off, so to speak. Because he's trigger happy to use his martial arts or he's trigger, a person is trigger happy to use their gun. I am saying this because 
If you carry a gun for the quote the wrong reasons and your intention is not clear why you do it, you will find yourself in said situation to where you have to defend yourself and may be successful at it only to come back and say, you see, I told you I needed a gun. You may be successful at it, but do you want to lay your head on the pillow every night trying to find peace, solace, and serenity, knowing that in your in our humanness, we are humans, we like being right. That is human nature. We are right. We are arrogant. Do you want to go to bed every night thinking that I'm going to buffer this issue I have of guilt that I killed someone last night because they tried to attack me and I told you I needed that gun. I will never live in that said scenario ever ever there is a difference between having a gun in your house and a glock because i got a glock you flaunt it on facebook you know what's going on in florida i've been taking gun lessons because i got to protect myself that is not being in the spirit it's not Keith, who are you to say what is being in the spirit? All I know. Hello, Jimmy. Good to see you, brother. I miss hearing you play, sir. Phenomenal singing, songwriter, man you are. Hello, Deborah. All I'm offering through this presentation tonight, titled Guns Versus God, Have We Lost Sight? This is not about Keith showing off muscles or being right or arrogant. I love you, and I would n not like to wake up in the morning to hear my brother and or sister to find some news that they were in a situation. I would love to know that they're still alive through whatever scenario, but would not like the idea that they have to lay their head down at night knowing they had to protect themselves to be right. Jimmy says... In addition to eliminating all the gun-free kill zones, they might need to take a real close look at form. Absolutely. Expect totally, Jimmy. It's all interwoven. Psychologically. Totally. And I am so not against guns. I get it. It's a tool. You need a good screwdriver, Phillips head, flathead, it serves its purpose. Right? We all agree. Totally, Keith, I get that. But you walk out of your house with a screwdriver this big, flathead, flathead and or Phillips screwdriver, and everywhere you go, you're pointing this thing, and you got one on your hip, and someone upsets you and you draw it. It just creates a problem. It's called instant karma. No matter what we think, no matter what we like, no matter what we believe, we can say guns are tools. Guns absolutely do nothing by themselves. They don't. Totally get it. But people are dying everywhere. In America. In schools. In churches. One on one. The black community. Black on black. White on white. White on black, black on white, in war, guns, 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 explosion, explosion, gunpowder, gunpowder, gunpowder. Fuck! If you're pissed off, challenge someone to a fucking fist fight in the parking lot. No one dies. No one dies. Everyone lives to see another day. Bumps and bruises, maybe. Take the guns away, they will resort to knives. Take the knives away, they resort to sticks. I get it. Peace will never be brought about worldwide via guns. It will never happen. Well, Keith, it brought peace in my life because I killed the son of a bitch that was breaking in my house. Totally get it. Ask the relatives of that person who you shot has it brought peace in their life? 
So Keith, I guess the question becomes, how do you propose that we get rid of the guns? Equally. So no bad person is left with a gun when I don't have one. That is exactly the point being made in this broadcast. It has nothing to do with that whatsoever. When you're connected to the source, we would all agree that God is love, the source of love and the source of peace and the source of protection. No matter who you are now in this room or later in this broadcast in the future, if you hear this presentation, you would have to agree, I would assume, that God is the source of love, peace, and protection. Now that we agree to that, why are we not necessarily leaning on it, but leaning in it? Because when we connect it, when we come connected to that particular reservoir, we no longer feel the need to protect ourselves. It has nothing to do with guns. It has not a single solitary thing to do with a gun. It has to do with something I'm using as an excuse. A beer bottle, a knife and a fork, <laughs> my car, whatever to protect myself. Because that is no longer applicable. I no longer need that. I am connected. Not only am I am not afraid, it's not even a possibility. Because what I am connected to, naturally, I feel an in invincibility about whatever is taking place in my life. And all the people in my proximity, the people I hang, hung around with tonight, people in this chat room now, I feel an in invincibility with you. I do, completely. I have my vulnerabilities. To where I have my moments. Absolutely, we all do. So I had to come in here tonight, come in here in this room. I got home, wind down, had some water. And this was really weighing heavy on my heart. Guns versus God, have we lost sight? I am not saying that you are less than me or less than anybody. You should not carry a gun. I am just asking or proposing the question. Just ask yourself, why am I carrying it? There are two different postures. One is, and I'm carrying it for that reason, versus, for that reason. And I know you may think, Keith, that is just absolutely silly. And that's okay. Think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because I really hope that a day does not come for you. That we have to prove ourselves as right to say, you see, I told you I needed this. When the self-fulfilling prophecy never needed to happen at all, which lessens the opportunity for you to be injured and or someone else. I'm just asking a question. A very, very simple question. The world will never achieve peace through guns. The world will never achieve peace through equal muscle and equal violence. Violence against violence. Violence standing up to violence. Dropping bombs to create peace. Killing the son of a bitch who has approached me to create peace. Doesn't work. Peace begets peace. Guns beget guns. I am peaceful. I live in a peaceful world. That is my experience. As to why I live in Memphis, Tennessee, I don't focus on the racism said to be here. Therefore, it does not exist in my world. So I don't need a gun. Because I will find said person and walk right up to them and disarm them by saying, What's up, my friend? How you doing? 
It's just an idea, a model, and my heart I am offering. I'm offering you something. Listen to this music. This is my example. Breathe, fall inside, breathe, fall inside, and breathe, and fall inside. And I know you feel that. And what you are feeling is truly way beyond fear, way beyond protection way beyond knives locking the door and guns that is really what you're connected to is that example I just posed to you that's real power subtle it may be but it's more powerful than brute force and might and military might and smite and fight Dear Lord, I love you. Peace, love, and always remember to live in the light.